Welcome back to Active Minds Podcast. Today's episode is going to be fucking special. We're on site in New York City in Ethan Durant's house. So first things first, thank you for the hospitality. Of course. It's been fucking awesome. And today's topic is going to be all about leverage. In this case, and why Ethan's in this conversation, is his entire relationship with leverage between his social networks, capital, cash, and basically moving forward, every strategic move. Now, before we get into it, the whole idea of Active Minds Podcast is to explore and learn through the perspectives and experiences of people who are paving their own lane. Figuratively, literally, for this guy. Then we have a little fun, we brainstorm, we shoot the shit a little bit to see how we can learn lessons from his experiences, and last but, and last but not least, overall, is moving smarter together. Ethan, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Dude, and thanks for coming and making it simple. <laughs> no, no, I always yeah. said it, bro. Dude, it's like a, like a traveling studio we had over here. Dude. No, bro, but that's how you make a studio, I mean, a podcast pop, just by yeah. showing up. Like, if you want somebody that's super basic, like The Rock or Kevin Hart, you know, you hit them, yo, listen, I'll go to your hotel right now. I heard you're in town. Let me go. I need you for 30 minutes and make it happen. We made you it know, happen we to, for we you. Get, we need to make that happen, actually. That'd be awesome. You definitely Kevin Hart. He's hilarious. So, hilarious. Ethan. He's a businessman. You do so many different things. Right. You love cars correct you have a media company correct you have a clothing line correct you fix credit correct man, <laughs> how do you manage it all oh man that's only like the things that like are shown right uh so many more businesses in the back that i, that I haven't seen like haven't needed social media push yet right um but yeah uh how do i manage it all i don't know just building a good team you know uh trust and uh, just hiring talented people that are good at every single one of those things. All those businesses that I have, have somebody inside that's extremely talented, and that's the reason I did that business, right? Right, and what are three things you look for in that person that you're, that you're gonna work with, that you're gonna trust with your company? Oh man, it all depends. I, first of all, I don't trust anybody. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm super hands-on. I'm looking at every single tiny detail because the day you don't, it's the day they get comfortable, and that's the day you might have a bad day. And we try to not have bad days. Um, it, it really all depends. It really, really all depends because every scenario is so different. I can't even like begin to explain one. Like for example, I started a business with somebody not so long ago that hasn't even been released online yet, but obviously money's been involved. We've like we've gotten leases and stuff like that. And the reason why I did it was simply because the guy was young, you know. He was young and he was hungry, and I thought to myself, okay, cool. I have money. He doesn't, but he's extremely hungry. He wants it. Uh, all he needs is somebody to give him the guidance, a good influence, and I can make this kid make me a bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? Leverage. So somebody who's driven. I guess, it, like I said, it just depends on every scenario. It depends okay. on every scenario. Well, the thing is, like, his motivation is perishable, and, like, mm -hmm. everyone and their mother looks driven, but the qualifiers, for example, skills, right? Discipline. Mm -hmm. I say more discipline. Discipline, discipline yes. Yeah. That definitely discipline. is a big differentiator yeah. between, you know, everyone and those people. What, does, what does discipline look like for you, for you personally? Discipline is doing the things that you don't want to do when you have to do them. You know, uh, like, for example, people say uh, the most successful people are people that go to the gym when they don't want to go to the gym, right? Yeah. That's a fact. So, you know, not everything as in entrepreneurship is sunshine and rainbows. It's bad days. It's hard days. But we still show up. We still do what we got to do. And those bad days are the ones that bring in the good days. You're not going to have good days if you don't have bad days. So, You, you talk about, I've peeped your social media, and uh, you talked about, you know, bad days, pushing through them. Be prepared. Be <laughs> <can't> prepared. <laughs> and bad days, pushing through them. And that's a big thing that we talk about on our podcast because... Right. We say that you have to hug your failures. That's how you. That's how you win at the end Correct. of the day, and how you learn. So, what's what's an example of a horrible situation that happened to you, and how did you overcome it? Um, well, here's the thing: I forget about every bad situation that happened. I just forget about it and move on to the next. Uh, but you name me, I've had car accidents. People die in car accidents. I've had cars go through buildings. I've had um, yeah, cars stolen. Yeah, I had a, had a car go through a mall. I was looking for the picture, but I couldn't find it. I wanted to show you. Yeah. I had a car go through a mall. What? Um, and uh, he went to the first store. I think the store's a Victoria's Secret. He went through it, the whole thing, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Did they, like, how yeah. did, Shit. whoa. Uh, they ran away. I just saw, I just pictured a bunch of panties all over the hood. Oh, yeah, it was like that. It was like that in the middle of the night. It was like 12 p.m. That's horrible. <laughs> wow, dude. Uh, I mean, obviously, the legalities aside, things happen. Shit Correct. happens. Like, Correct. you can't. So mitigating risk is something that 
uh, in talking to you and all the times that we've talked, I gotta give you props. Like mm-hmm. you mitigate risk all the fucking all the time. time. Yeah. All so the time. If, if by any chance you don't know what the fuck I'm saying, I like to break it down and over explain. Mitigating <laughs> risk is basically here's what could go wrong, here's how I can respond to it, right? So something that Ethan does amazingly well is mitigating risk. You're constantly reading the room, reading the talent, reading the basically the entire scenario. What is something that would normally like trigger a red flag for you in any situation? Maybe let's call it a deal. Like if there's a deal happening, mm-hmm. what would be a red flag? Um well, like you said, reading the room, it's not like I'm actively doing it. It's like second nature to me. You know, it just it just happens naturally, whether I want to or not. You know, I try to be on my phone and I'm still seeing what's going on. I'm like, fuck, can I? I think so. It is. Uh, now, I grew up with a single mom. She was very aware always. She was like, be careful with your surroundings. Look who's around you. So it just stuck with me. I can't um, not be aware. It's like impossible for me now. It's kind of annoying. But um, it, it depends on the situation. If we're talking about like if I'm working with somebody, like if somebody wants to come work with me. Yeah, that's um, a good example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to see what their money habits look like because nowadays, 2022, whatever, uh, this generation, you have people who look like they have so much money and they have zero money. Like, mm-hmm. I'm talking about it's bad. If, if your money management skills aren't there, then I just simply can't do it, you know? Um, like, for example, it took me a little bit to, to well, not, not, it didn't take me that long, but in all reality, showing that you have money would never work in your favor when trying to work with somebody who has more money than you will never work in your favor because uh, if I show up to somebody who wants to invest into any kind of projects of mine, mm-hmm. and um, well, for me, I have to. I have a fucking car rental company, right? A uh, super car rental company. Uh, but let's say I didn't, and I show up in a Lambo, their first thought is going to be, that's where my money's going, mm-hmm. right? Right. If, let's say, I'll give you the construction example, right? If you, uh, if, if you have a developer that's building a building and he has two contractors come, including myself, if I have my house being built, and I have a guy that comes in a truck wearing work clothes or regular clothes, whatever it is, I know that's going to do a good job. If some other guy comes in a Bentley Bentayga or a Lamborghini, I'm thinking my money is not going to material. It's going to this guy's lifestyle. So you usually want to see, like, obviously money management, uh, responsibility, and, you know, service, you know, really where it's all going. Because, you know, you did talk I feel about like perception. perception is huge. Perception is huge, mm-hmm. bro. I could be the most... Uh, responsible dude in the world but just showing up the wrong way is gonna make it seem like i'm not you know and just how like does that. showing it up it depends who it is too like if you show up to like a club in a lambo or like a whatever kind of car all the jewelry you're gonna look like that guy like you're yeah. looking like that guy okay he got money now if you go to a business meeting like that you're looking like you need money to keep going that lifestyle <laughs> okay. you you came here today like to saying hey money. i need to keep this life going you know like why are you wearing this to a business meeting it's weird so how do you stay humble in a world that's so you know loud and and you know flashy almost i don't know man i think um the last time that we spoke i told you like i i'm a collector and one of the things i think i collect is good people i keep good people around me you know i I keep really really good people around me you know everybody here everybody beautiful and they all that's not even part of my team that's just my best friend i fly him in here whenever i'm bored and i tell i tell no i tell him to stay here and he want to go home i don't let him go home Uh, (laughs) he's been he's been wearing the same he's been wearing (laughs) the same clothes he's been wearing the same clothes i have you to fucking wash him and buy him new clothes because literally he cannot he's running out he's literally running out he wants to go show him show him (laughs) It's all good, you man. Know, You're a good time. <laughs> nah, good time he man. wants to leave, but I'm like, nah. You're not nah, going out. You live here now, bro. Yeah. So yeah. if you're if you're, you're if you're watching the podcast, we've we've discussed this before. Who you surround yourself with? Yeah. Be authentic. Come correct. Don't pretend to be something you're not. People will notice. Um, hey, I'm not gonna lie. I've seen a few people make it faking it. So fake oh, yeah. it till you make it. Does I do work believe for some in fake people. it till you make Just it. Just not for everybody. Yeah. Now, yeah. it does work for some people, though. It does work. Like, so I guess, like, I don't know. Because I've seen people, uh, I've, I lived in L.A. for three, four years. So when I, when I was in L.A., I saw oh, people a lot of who, you understand. I, my main business is supercar rentals, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm renting cars out. So I get to see the reality of people. I'll see somebody go to a club. I'll see on Instagram, they're, they're, mm. they're popping. They're looking all good. They're looking amazing. Everybody's like, yo, this guy's outside. And the next morning, they're like, yo, bro, can I extend? I don't got 1500 <laughs> but I got 12 Can you do 12 bro? Please, bro. Or like, yo, bro, like, I need, you know, wow. I can't. I got this event tonight. I got to show up to that event, and I don't have the full 1800 Can you please do 15 bro? I'm, I'm going to send you a lot of people, bro. Please. Can you take uh-huh. it from the deposit, bro? Okay, so, like, I see 
the reality of a lot of people and i've seen people like that uh make it actually like make it and then i've seen people just we call it the the, the la circle la lap where like they do their lap uh, they go uh -huh. broke they leave well sometimes that gets you a seat in the room right when you when you're able to be in a group of people and you mm -hmm. look like you're the part and then if you are ready you probably can meet the right person and no, by come all up means, off look, of it. get in the room right like brendan right. metaphor said get in the room uh do what you have to do to get in the room but don't get lost in never having money at the end of the day you need money to make money and if you don't have the best upbringing you don't have family money you don't have you know obviously good credit to begin to beginning to start off with something do what you gotta do to get a hands of that money but once you get that money make sure it goes to making more money not solidifying who you are because like uh one thing that i say to all my friends a lot i will not allow anybody around me to wear a fake watch you cannot wear a fake watch around me because and i will never oh you suggest me earlier about a red flag I would never do business with anybody that has a fake watch on. Never. Here's why. If I have to do business with this guy, right? Let's say, let's, let's, God forbid, let's say you have this AP right now, right? No. Yeah. Oh, nah. no. Nah. <laughs> I was about to say, this is not. No, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> oh, okay. I know it's a parent, right, bro? I know oh, it's, yeah. Like, check me out. Like, let's say, let's say this is an AP, right? Yeah. I have a Rolex Daytona. This is an AP, right? And you and me are going to start a business together. You came at me, Ethan, let's start a business together. I said, all right, cool, let's start a business together. And you're wearing a fake watch. As soon as that business makes $100,000, I'm gonna to wanna to leave the money in the business to grow it more. Mm -hmm. You are gonna to wanna to take 50,000 bucks out to replace the fake one for the real one before you get caught. Like you, mm. the example you gave was perfect then. You said the person shows up in a certain look yeah. and yeah. then you're thinking, oh, you're here to, so I can keep funding your lifestyle. 1,000%. So that's, 1, a habit. that's a habit that they've built. It's a, yeah, the, it's, it's, it's Ponzi schemes and just mm. overall, it just keeps ha keep happening. Uh, well, it's not Ponzi scheme. What's, uh, what's the scheme where you just, you just take somebody's money and put it somewhere else? Perfect. Pyra uh, pyramid, no, not pyramid scheme. I know it is a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, Ponzi it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. It's a scheme. Yeah. So basically, bro, you, I see it so much. Rob Peter to pay some Paul. people get out of it, bro. You need talent, you know, because some people can make money. Some people can. Some people really are talented people that can make money mm -hmm. and they can, you know, grab all that, fuck up a bag, and you know, make it, and everything's all good. But not everybody can, right? It, it, it can get to a point where it's too deep, right? But uh, I see it so much where people would just grab money and just allocate to other places. Mm -hmm. And then the real reason why the money was put in here to begin with never gets used for that. So now you just all that. So I would never do business with anybody that wears, that wears a fake watch. If I see you wearing a fake watch, and listen, I have every fucking watch. So I will know if it's fake. <laughs> Literally. Every brand, you name it. I have it. I've had it. I sold it. Like the Rolex is the tick? I, mm, bro. <laughs> listen, well, listen to me. I will not do business with anybody that wears a fake watch. I just won't do it. I refuse to do it. Don't That's wear a fake reflect. watch. That's Do a not wear a fake watch. Yeah, it's actually really cool. I reflect. won't tell you. I'll look at it and I'll tell you that's a nice watch. And that is Ooh. me letting you know it's fake. Please go away. That's cold. Yeah. Nah. So. I won't let anybody around me work anything fake. Uh, one of my boys came out to a table with me the other day. And his boy that doesn't know me came. Uh, he was wearing like a fake Balenciaga shirt and a watch that wasn't a fake watch but was trying to resemble IAP. And before we left my boy's house, I said, yo, bro, do me a favor. Uh, go take that watch off and change your shirt, bro. And um, my boy's like, damn, Ethan, you're a savage. And I'm like, listen, I'm not a savage. I work very hard for everything that I have. For me to go to a table that I'm paying for and somebody to see this kid and be like, oh, all their shit is fake because of one kid. Listen, this watches, this, the clothes that we wear, the cars that we drive, it's a reward for the risk that I took. All right? Mm -hmm. I took a risk, whether it was 10K risk, 20K risk, $50,000 risk. Those risks that I took paid off the money and I bought items for those because of those risks. So don't you take my risk that I took for granted and my hard work by trying to wear something the same that it's not. You haven't earned that yet. So mm -hmm. don't worry, you know? Work your way up for it. That's Stop taking a cheap route. What was the turning point in your life? Because you're so passionate. I mean, you said you have a single mom, you know, you had a upbringing. So what, what, what was a turning point in your life when your life changed? When did it all click for you? Well, it never has. I wake up every day. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> it still hasn't clicked. You know? Really? No, I don't know. I think, uh, I think I'm just uh, I'm gifted in making money. You know, I'm just gifted. Every, yeah. I, I haven't had like anything fail like that. I make everything happen. Everything. Like, a reminder. Making money is not a thing you do. It's a skill you learn. Mm -hmm. That your consistent practice of that. Mm -hmm. It's a skill. You're skill building. So you're constantly yeah. exercising that muscle every fucking time. Because mm -hmm. like you said it before, in a certain space that you operate in, it comes so fast and easy. You're like, fuck, I feel like I'm kind of losing the mm -hmm. respect or love for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, but that's, yeah. dude, that's just a symptom of you exercising that muscle over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's, 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 like, it's like my passion, you know, making money. It's, just yeah. like, it's a passion for me. I like it. 
what else would you do in life if it's not making money? Like, what would I do if I woke up and I didn't make any money? Because, like, if we talk about what items, what would you in life, do? I don't know. Because, like, like <laughs> if we talk about items in life, I already have everything I want. There's absolutely nothing, bro. My favorite car was a Lamborghini Huracan. I have twelve. Like, I have every color at this point. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's like, if if happiness or freedom or success was measured by items or uh, wealth, then realistically, I would have been happy a long time ago. What I like is progression. I have an addictive personality, right? So my, my addiction is progressing and like seeing things grow. Go from A to B to C, you know, and going all the way up. And if making money didn't exist, I just wouldn't know what the fuck to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the fuck to do with myself. I don't know what to do with my life. I'd be bored. So what do you do on a, on a day off? What does that look like for you? What's your perfect day, day? What's your perfect day? I feel like every day is the same for me now, though, you know? Like, you change it up then. Eh, no, but I like my life. I like my <laughs> okay, life. okay, I like okay, my life. okay. Every day is Your the life same. is pretty nice. Every yeah. day is the same because I wake up and I do whatever I want to do uh, and what I have to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like my, my job is fun for me. I really enjoy what I do. And it's not, it's not a chore. It's not, I'm not a slave to it. It's just fun. Now I'm going to ask you something. Go ahead. You can only have one. You have to give up one. Love or money? Mm, wow. Wow. Mm. Hmm. That's fucked up. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna ask you That's something. That's fucked up. <laughs> love or money? I love that you're really thinking about Wait, this. So <laughs> I cannot have the other one. Like I couldn't no. have it. I can't. I can't even chase for it. You can chase for whatever you want, but whether you attain it or not. Like if you take, like, could I dare, could I pick love and then? Go ahead and get my money after. No, nope. you, you, you can only you can have one. From me. I'll go get it in a <laughs> yeah, I promise you, I'll make you it. You can only have one. Days. I can only have one. You can only have one. I don't know, bro. <laughs> does, does, does my mom, does, does the love my mom has for me go away too, or what? No, she can love you. You. Are you talking about romantic love? No, no, no. Love. What are you talking oh, about? Please explain the question. So love I need, in I need, your. I need, I need this question. This question to be dissected. Okay. Okay. Love no, for who? Being... Who's loving who? The ability to love. The ability to feel love. I probably don't feel that already anyway, so I'll choose money. Okay, there mm-hmm. you go. There's the answer then. There you go. <laughs> the to the feel feeling like. part brings me, okay, you, because you, in many different ways, your approach is intrinsic. The way you process things and think. Like we were talking about before. Yeah. Like yeah. The processing speed and all that other shit. Yeah, now, I'm a very different human being, guys. I think differently. I think on a whole different frequency. You were talking about I this before, extremely yeah. extremely different. The way I think, the way I see things, the way I process things, it's so different from everybody else's. And I What's know that, that like when you're in different spaces? Obviously, I'm not talking about are you changing yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm talking about how do you notice that you can leverage that every single time? I don't know, bro. I really don't. It just like, does. <laughs> me and my team, we have a constant argument because I keep trying to convince them that I'm a sociopath. And they're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. I'm like, bro, I'm a sociopath. The way I work, the way I see things, the way I maneuver, the way I just like break things down, yeah. it's so analytical and so in a way for me to find out what's best and like what to do like so quickly. Where there's no emotion. I don't think it. a sociopath would say I that think, they're a sociopath. That's, that's, that's what they keep saying. That's what they keep saying. They keep I saying. Actually know they know me. They really? know me so well. So every day we have Maybe an argument. Maybe that's the ultimate where sociopath. I want to convince them that I'm a sociopath. They're like, no, you're not. You're very good with people. And I'm like, yes, because he benefits me. Maybe you're a narcissist. There's a high. Definitely not a narcissist. Called, I, mean, I, I am. I, I am narcissistic to a point. I mean, I'm only. Everybody child. is. I'm 24. I'm doing pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I'm it's hard not to be like a little fun. You know, like liking yourself. Like you have bit. to be. Look, if you're, if, I'm being narcissistic, but you have to number one, love yourself. Don't let anybody tell you you can't love yourself. And number two, you have to have that in you because if you don't have that then you have nothing to prove you get walked all over you, know? you have to prove because like listen like at the end of the day we work so hard to prove something right yeah whether we know it or we don't know it in, in internally we want to prove something so that narcissistic in me it's like okay well no i'm not gonna let anybody be better than me top than me have more than me so i'm gonna go for it you get what i'm saying yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna lose to anybody i'm not even gonna lose to myself because you know ethan yesterday was doing better my biggest fear is doing doing less than I did the day before, the year before, the month before. That's never happened to me because I think that's my fear, right? So that narcissistic interest in, in me to always be better than I was before has pushed me to always be better. What is your greatest fear? I just said it. That is it? Being, okay. Yeah. That getting getting, getting my see? car repoed, losing my home. <laughs> what the fuck? That shit's embarrassing. Shit happens. That's wild. But you I, think, I think the fear of losing one Lambo led me to have like 90. You know, because honestly, <laughs> not, you know, not if I lose one, I still have 89. 
Ah, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> but you see his motivator though, like, because a lot of people get caught up in like, and this is why motivation is perishable, by the way. You hit, your motivator is the, the progression, right? Yeah. So you're only measuring yesterday. Mm -hmm. Even when you said about the bad stuff, you're like, fuck it, it's another day, let's move on to the next one. Oh yeah, we move forward every day. That right there, thinking back to, let's, go, let's call it your childhood or your, you know, your teenage years, what was the brokest you've ever been? Um, the brokest I've ever been. The brokest I've ever been was when I first moved to LA. So mm -hmm. I was doing real estate here in New York City, mm -hmm. and I was doing all right. I was making like 300K a year, like 280. Uh, and I went to New York City to, to uh, do something different. I, I, I got into supercar rentals on accident. I went to LA to do something different, and I didn't know what it was going to do. Uh, and I wasn't broke. I said, um, I didn't have any money in the bank, but at the same time, I was... I was broken out of like I wasn't bringing any money, you know what I'm saying? So I could have, I had a little bit of money, but if I spent it, it would have been gone for good. And I'm talking about that was like, uh, I have to be smart. I have no money coming in and know what to do. It was probably my brokest moment. I remember I was like, uh, me and my girl, we got an Airbnb for about a month or two. We're paying monthly. And into it, I figured out what I'm do. And all we would do was go to the gym. We would just go to the gym every single day because that's the only thing we could do without spending money. You know, the gym membership at LA Fitness is like 40, 50 bucks a month. So we'll pay for that. And then we would walk there and walk back. I wouldn't buy a car because in New York, you're getting a drive, you're in a car. So I didn't want to buy a car until I knew it was going to happen. So I remember just, we would just walk to the gym and walk back. That's the only thing we did for fun. And one time as we were walking back to the gym, it was raining. And I got so mad. I was so pissed off. I was like, what the fuck? Like, it was like a month and a half in. I hadn't done anything. I hadn't made any money. Like, and I'm walking back to her, to the house with my girl, and it's raining. I was disappointed in myself for bringing her there with me. The crazy thing about that day is that I remember being so mad, but I looked at her, and she was just happy as hell. Aww. She was so happy. And I'm like, what the fuck are you so happy for? She's like, <laughs> she's like, I think it's romantic. Aww. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, that I was so mad. I'm like, stop being so fucking happy. <laughs> but um, no, and uh, great girl, she's still with me. Um, thank God. Uh, but that was probably my lowest moment. I would say that was the moment I was like. Damn, I can never be in this position ever again. And I mean, like, probably like three months later, I had, I had like $500,000 already. What does, what does retiring mean to you? Do you ever plan never. on just never? I figured you would say that. It's <laughs> curse word out here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't retire. No, my biggest fear is, well, one of my biggest fears is dying, getting old. I don't want to be old. So, like, you know, my cameraman, uh, John, right here, he's like three months older than me. And I just look at him, I'm like, Bro, you old as shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, you old, bro. Like, I, I don't want to be like you ever. Uh, but I think that's like, I like uh, if you look over there, obviously you guys see you have oxygen fucking. I see, I see. Uh, I tried it. I yeah, tried it too. Oxygen, yeah. Man. So yeah, thank you. I literally bought a hyperbaric chamber that's coming in. Uh, I do cryotherapy consistently. I that's do IV. Up. I yeah. do I do so much health stuff. I want to live forever. I think there's people that live forever. We just don't know them. Did you see what they did that study? Well, not a study. It's an actual experiment with mice. And they took old mice and young mice, and they took the mm -hmm. spinal fluid from the old, from the younger ones, mm -hmm. put it in the new ones, and dude, they got younger. It's fucking trippy as hell. Like it's only a matter of time before humans start doing the exact same thing. Oh, a thousand percent. What's that shit that celebrities uh uh take? Baby what? <laughs> Adrenochrome. Oh, oh, that's Adrenochrome. Right. No, no, no. Uh, He's baby, talking about the the, the umbilical cord shit. What do you? Fuck, I can't like, I drink, the, drink the, the, the something with the baby. Oh, it's I, I want to try that. It's, somebody, it somebody it's, has it's a sale, hormone. It's a hormone that's released when you instill fear into a child. It's called adrenochrome. Is it, I just don't want to die. Like, I just, but like, it's really I fucked up, so we're not going to... So wait, you scared <laughs> We're cutting baby? that out of the <laughs> Wait, wait, what happened? It's, it's the way that it's ex extracted. Is, I mean, it's a crazy like conspiracy theory that... Um, Oh, yeah. that's not what I was thinking. I was thinking about uh, the other one. Oh, like, I just put myself under the bus. Babies. <laughs> they will literally save the umbilical cord and, and they will take extract the proteins out of that stuff. No, no, yeah, that yeah. I've heard of. Yeah. But what you were saying, I think, is I don't know what I was saying. I just want to live forever. If you know how to, hit me up. I'll pay a lot of money. I'll pay, <laughs> I'll pay, I'll pay eight figures. If you legitimately have, like, a formula that's working, like, proven, like, good... I would pay today eight figures for that. So what is your formula? I live forever because you know, money is compounding. You know, mm. yeah. forever, money is forever compounding. Mm. The more money you have, the more money you make. So I'll spend eight figures right now. I'll make that back in like a good couple of years. So your formula right now is oxygen chambers, cryotherapy. Oh, yeah, just being healthy, being good. You know? Being healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a percent. All right, all right. Fuck yeah. yeah. When it comes, it, it's funny too because that is in the spirit, almost everything you're doing 
is setting up the foundations for you to consistently have leverage. In fact, we joked earlier about how like you'll you'll like forget about money somewhere and then yeah. like get a text or an alert like oh shit there's money there which is also why yeah. you collect at least what? that's one of the benefits of collecting wait, wait when was the first was it yesterday when was the first thursday it's the third so yeah it's the third, yeah. third thursday. Thursday. Yeah. so thursday one of my clients that um i gave him one of my years for a year but i'm actually gonna pull this up and show you no i'm not even because he just happened on the first so one of my clients that I had to i gave him a years for a year mm-hmm. uh hundred and thirty thousand However, I split the payments for him because he has something going on. Mm-hmm. So he gave me fifty thousand first month, fifty thousand second month, and then thirty thousand the, the other month. Uh, I completely forgot about it. I, just, I forgot like that like he was supposed to come give me that money, and he texted me reminding me. Where is it? Uh, oh yeah, right here. Look, bro. Yeah. Oh shit, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. I mean, come. Literally, like, like I literally forgot about fifty grand. Wow. Got, oh, and that same day, I picked up my Huracan from the shop because somebody broke the mirror downstairs. And as I'm driving back, I opened the middle console and it was 10,000 bucks in cash. I'm like, oh, what the hell? I forgot that was there. Ta-da. I texted my, uh, my, my shop. I'm like, thank you for not stealing it. <laughs> what does, what does, you have all this cash, right? Coming from everywhere. Do you give back? What does that look like to you giving Would back? I give back? Do you give back? I mean, like if I see a hobo on the street and like the hobo somehow triggers one of my emotions, then yeah. Right. Otherwise not. Like if you just like if you come asking for money, I probably won't give it to you. How do you feel you positively? I mean, I, I mean, a guy do push ups for money. And I give it to him, okay. and then I met another guy to do. You, did, you were responsible for all those bum fights yeah. back in the day. <laughs> no, no, no. Yo, you remember bum I fights? Go to, I go to Saks, and, so and they know me there. The little kids know me there. Um, and freaking, they just wait for me to come because I always I always come in a nice car. They wait for me to come, and sometimes I don't have like little little bills to give to everybody, so I have to give it to one and trust them to split it. That's crazy, but they start fighting. They're like, no, why oh, you give it to him? Oh, God, I'm winning. But it's good to make people do put something, like work for it. Well, like, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's easier, it's better for me to teach you how to make money. It's better for yeah. me to give you a lesson than to give you actual 100 bucks. Absolutely. Because if a hobo comes, it's hobo uh, 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 and a fucking bad word nowadays, you never know. Is it? I mean, I'm like, I don't saying. know. Just, We're I'm not very PC. Look, I can't if keep a hobo anymore. comes and asks me for $100 and I say yes, he's going to keep going and ask me for 100 bucks. Now, if I tell a hobo that asked me for a hundred bucks, uh, do push-ups, I'll give you a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. right? He's gonna go to somebody else and tell him, hey, what can I do for exactly. you to give me a hundred bucks? Sooner or later, he'll go, uh, he'll find somebody that maybe does construction and be like, listen, go fucking put those blocks there, pick them up, set them down over and over for eight hours, and I'll give you this much, you know? So just set up a trend, give him a less skill, you know? At the end of the day, everything's a trade, so mm-hmm. that's why I do it. Like, and if it's, if it's a woman with kids, just have all my money, I don't, I don't care. Just go raise the kids. Is that how you feel you positively impact the people in your life by teaching them the tools of your trade? Yeah, I mean, everybody around me live, leaves better. If somebody mm-hmm. comes into my life and doesn't leave a better person, more successful, I did, I did something wrong, and that's never mm-hmm. happened. So all, all the people that work with me, work for me, I make them have their own thing, I push them to do their own thing, and I teach them how to make money with your own money, obviously. Why does that matter to you? Because, bro, I can't have people that just, like, depend on me 24-7. That's just weird, you know? I can't have that. I just gets, like, uh, it, it starts to feel like weight on my shoulders. I don't want weight, you know? Go out there and make me more money, you know? Mm. Don't yeah. just sit here and wait to get paid. That's just, uh, not it. Go somewhere else, bro. Mm. Self-reliance, I can definitely see that. Huh. That's self-reliance. Everybody in any of my business businesses know Every day you wake up, go bring a bag home. So I call all of my businesses, this is home. This is our home. If you came today, bring a bag home, okay? Like we're a family, we're a business. Bring money. Bring me money. Bring us money. And if you don't, you're doing something wrong. Just like that. What are the common issues that you find when things go wrong, when somebody doesn't bring the bag? Like, what are certain things that are just... Oh, now everybody's scared of me. Everybody, they, okay. there's like, they'll, if something's gonna go wrong, like, they know what they did wrong. They're gonna go try to cover up before I find out, you know? Like, because <laughs> things don't go wrong unless something actually was done wrong. So if something went wrong, you did something wrong. Yeah. So it seems like everybody. They don't, they, they don't like to do that. Yeah. It seems like everybody looks up to you. Thousand percent. Who do you look up to? Nobody. Nobody at all. Like, that, I think. I never had somebody that I looked at and I'm like, I want to be just like you. Really? You know, I never had it, never, never seen it. I'm, I might have seen people with certain things that I've wanted, but I have never had somebody that I look up to, honestly. And I think the people that look up to me, I never asked them to look up to me. 
Uh, the people I look up to me the most are people who are very, very close to me. And the mm-hmm. reason why they look up to me the most is because they see everything I do on a daily basis, the responsibility that I have, um, and everything, right? Um, so you've earned their respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never asked for it. If anything, I never expect anything from anybody. Like my friends with there, they all they always get mad because I'm like, yeah, if I ever go broke, you guys can leave. I'm like, yo, bro, why do you feel like that? No, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Please leave. I do not want you to stay. Like, go. If I don't have to give, don't stay. They're like, no, bro. I'm like, stop being emotional. Just go. You know, I don't expect anything from anybody, but I expect it from myself. You know? Okay. I mean, it's, it seems like you're building your own tribe in that regard, mm-hmm. and it definitely looks like you've earned the respect. One thousand percent. We see it uh, here. We see it. Yeah, Everybody yeah. here loves you. You can tell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You love me. <laughs> okay. Almost there. Love it, love it. Give me five more minutes. <laughs> um, in terms of leverage, in your friendships and your social circles, we, we were going through that now. On the business side, building leverage, you've definitely achieved it through the collecting, right? The collecting definitely gives you leverage yeah. com- down the line. Right now, what are some things that you're focusing on when it comes to building more leverage? Just buying more stuff. Look, buy things and rent it out, lease it out, borrow it out to other people. People will pay you for the things that you own, right? And if you don't have the money to buy those things, just borrow money from somebody, promise them a return every single month until you fully pay it off, and then have somebody pay you more for that item. You're still the owner. You might own owe a little bit of money to somebody else for it, but you're making more money every month, all right? If I can buy an asset from somebody and then pay that person 2,500 bucks a month and then charge somebody else 4,500 bucks a month, Look, I'm winning. I'm still making 2K every single month, and the asset's owned by me. This is the, my client is paying the loan off for me, and he's paying me money on top. I'm getting profit on top every single month and making equity gains. So just buy things. Listen, if you make $100,000, that's like the, the gold number for people nowadays, 100K. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I blew 100K in like 10 minutes. That's not money. That's number one. But if you make $100,000, you should immediately spend that money right away. Invest it into anything else. A hundred K in your account is nothing. You're broke. Like you're you could go lose everything. That's not gonna save you. If you if you're not worth a million, any money you have should go into investing or buying things that are gonna make you more money. Okay? Literally, just like that. Buy a business, buy a house and rent it out, buy a car and rent it out, buy a watch and rent it out, buy a camera and do something. But you should not have any money in your account if you don't have at least a million dollars. Because it's not going to happen. It's not just going to appear in there. Okay? That's true. If you want to play the game of save $10, save $10, save $10 until you get to a million, that's going to take very, very, very long for you. Put that money up. If you have 100 k right now, put it up and risk it to make a mil. And if you lose it, try again later. But and even if won't. they only have 1000 they could still do what you just said. 1000%. 1000%. What kind of... What would you tell somebody who just has a thousand to buy right now that they can flip right now? Uh, information. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait. If you're watching this and enjoying it, press pause for a second. Go to activemindsclub.com. Again, activemindsclub.com. Here you will have membership access to our exclusive networking events as well as behind the scene access to our guests where you yourself can ask them questions. Not to mention, at these events, and in the community, you're gonna have access to the very mentors that are here sitting with us, as well as many, many more that are doing cool things in stocks, marketing, cars, real estate, where we're going to have you have access to education, insights, how to's, all things that you can apply to your life and business. Okay. Because if you only have a thousand bucks, like you just clearly don't know how to make money. If you only have a thousand dollars, you have no clue on how money works. So. Find out how money works by buying information from somebody. Okay. Where would you suggest <laughs> acquiring this information? Should someone go <laughs> look? Because obviously YouTube University exists, Google University exists, but you already know, man. People are gonna ask. But yeah. where do I go? Where do I look? I mean, bro, listen. You, if you have to ask that question, then you're just fucking lazy. <laughs> Google yeah. it. Find somebody. Yeah, that's the right answer. It's ridiculous. And like, yeah. find it. That's Come the right on answer. Now. You're Come gonna on, have to figure out a way. One of, one of my students gave me, told me this, right? And, he, and I love this analogy, right? Because when you pay for information, you're just taking the elevator. Any information that is out there is free. You can find it anywhere, right? You can find out how I do what I do, how I make money online, trying and error. You can do all that. And you can find it on your own without paying a single dollar. 
that is taking the stairs. If you want to take the elevator, you gotta pay for that information, right? So listen, you can be lazy and pay for the information, but don't be so lazy that you, you just wanna just go ahead and throw money, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and find somebody or find someplace, something you wanna do that you're interested in, that you think you might have an advantage in, mm -hmm. and invest in that. Whether it's Amazon, drop shipping, car rentals, Airbnb, whatever it is, just find out how to do it and get started. On the topic of him, of what he was talking about, the thousand, um, that's how wholesaling became such a thing. Because mm. sometimes they would take the grant and they would give that as an earnest deposit to get the contract and then flip the contract and make more money. So, but it, but it still aligns with your business model. Basically, it's like get something, borrow the rest, and then arbitrage it and keep the, you know, the difference. Yeah, that's if you don't have money. If you don't have money, go get money. Yeah. Right? That's step number one. But if you have money, just get to investing. Invest and have multiple streams of income. Well, that's why I ask, because right now, over 70% of Americans, right, don't have $1,000. Like, not even $1,000, right? So when you hear that, that's well, why I asked that man, question. Like, what? <laughs> like, oh, man. Yeah, dude, 70% of Americans. Like, it's funny, too, because you go on, like, Instagram, Twitter, everyone's balling. Everyone's making six figures. But in real life... Six figures, not balling. Oh, but... Just oh, so you know... You can't tell them that. Listen, listen, I'll be very real with you. If you're here right now and you're gonna get the reality of it. A million dollars is the new average class, all right? That's literally what it is. A million dollars, I'm broke. I'm broke, I'm, I'm average, all right? 100K, you're broke, I'm sorry. Anything below that, I don't know how you're alive. Sorry to break it to you, but that's just me being real. Make some money, all right? Inflation is a real thing. Finance Wait, is a real on, thing. Hold on, hold on, I'm thinking about this. Because a million dollars, right? Yeah. It triggered Your him, house? Huh? You triggered him. Like a, like a, like a what, what? <laughs> let's say, <laughs> We're in New York, all right? Everybody's got one million. <laughs> Not everybody. One million dollars barely affords you a one and a half bedroom. It's like, oh, a, yeah. like a one bedroom studio, all right? So your money's gone. Dude. Is it, let's do a regular place like Florida. What's like a two, three bedroom house in Florida cost? House? House? Yeah. Uh, you're looking at like five to seven, depending on the area. Right. Five to seven, you have $300,000 left with kids bills cars there you go that's it. You, know. you said you, you have no money and just for you guys outside asking if you have more debt than cash coming in you are not worth a million all right you're not worth that if you have a house that's worth uh seven hundred thousand but you owe six hundred thousand you only have a hundred k don't be telling nobody you're a millionaire you're not you don't have that <laughs> That really upset that him. That disqualified a lot of people from that conversation. <laughs> um, you know, because people need to like really understand. You need to borrow money to make money. Don't borrow money to buy things. Rule number one: never borrow money to buy yourself something you can't afford. If you can't afford it, just don't buy it. Borrow money to make money, not to buy a house that you can't afford. Buy income. All right. Buy income. That it's funny. Okay, so that we have talked buy about. Buy income. Before. I love that. Yeah, buy, buy income. Buy income. And like your approach to collecting. That's how I see it. To me, it's yeah. like you're buying income. Yeah. You, God forbid an act of fucking war, force majeure, whatever the legal term you want to go with happens tomorrow. Here you go. I'm going to cash that in. I'm going to cash this in. Yeah, you're yeah. fine. Yeah. So here's the crazy thing. Even like for watches, right? When I bought my first Rolex, uh, I, I really shouldn't have bought it, but I bought it and I told <laughs> myself, um, if I ever need the money, I'll just sell it. Mm -hmm. And that's how you convince yourself Assets. to buy the first one. <laughs> but... You will do everything to not sell that watch. You'll do every single oh, thing. To not, to yeah, no, nah, yeah, you get emotional attached. Especially like if there's there's a big difference in selling it to buy something more or yeah. something better or selling it because you need it. So you'll do everything to not lose it. So that's why I like buying things too, is because I'm just putting my money in places, forgetting about it, and it goes up in value and uh you know, it pushes me to not have to like work more. I mean, what was to, I mean to work more? What was the most emotional moment you've had when you got something and you were like, Oh my god, I made it. Like damn, this that's is awesome. never happened. Every okay. time I get something, Stuff. I feel more disappointed than like, than than good. Like, when I wanted my first Lambo and I got it, I was like, "Damn, what now?" Then I wanted like the other Lambo and I was like, "Fuck, okay, well now I got it." Every time I grab something, I can't. I'm just thinking about what's next. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm addicted to, to like the growth, the, the success, like the the chase of it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I want. So whenever I get something. I never get that, oh, I made it. Never mm -hmm. have. Never, never, never. If anything that, that gives me a good feeling of like, oh, I made it, is that I really take care of everybody around me, you know? Like, my mom lives off me. My grandparents love me. Everybody that's around me in my family lives fully off of me. Like, they have income from my business, you know? Mm -hmm. so that is, like, probably the one thing that I'm, like, I'm happy about. But even then, I have more family members. So I need to make more money. 
that so act- family this is also something that we talk about on the podcast yeah. too you know yeah. fulfillment where you seek fulfillment you know yours is in family nah uh, it, it, well it, may, it makes you feel slightly fulfilled you said yeah, sometimes Look, my, my mom all day you know when you make money family is a little tricky sometimes you know sometimes yeah. they they you know because like when you give a, when pop you, out you never knew you had even that when you give a handout uh, it's kind of back to like the whole giving a whole hundred bucks for doing nothing. It's like feeding a it's cat. Same thing with family. When you give family money for doing nothing and they get used to that, you're disabling them. Put them in a position to make money. Teach them how to make money and don't reward people for not doing nothing. You know, a lot of people now like with this whole uh, unemployment and stuff like that. It's like you're rewarding somebody from doing nothing. Like you're creating a horrible country right now. You know, you have those people like at home now with no money because unemployment's not hitting no more. Well, whose fault is that? You got you gave somebody money for doing nothing. Then you have people who be who are becoming thieves, robbing people. Uh, what uh, crime is like all times up mm-hmm. since unemployment happened with with COVID. Why? Because you gave people that never had money a little bit of money for doing nothing, and now that's gone. They want to meet that same lifestyle they had when that came in. Speaking of your approach to things, I still on topic of leverage. You do we, what, did you always have it growing up or no? What stuff, things, money? What would be like the most like did I have? Did like I, if you were like, let's say, like was... growing up, yeah, like did you grow up rich? No, not really. okay, uh, no, not rich. So that but, that's why I asked, comfortable, yeah, comfortable, yeah, I'm comfortable. because this I've is, noticed I'll, that poverty. I'll, I'll put it like this because people yeah. ask me this question all the time. Anybody that asks me, I'm just gonna send this video. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I grew up with a single mom who, if she made $3 a month, she would give me $2, put half of the dollar for my future, and give herself half. With that being said, I, I grew up with a very hardworking mom that didn't make that much money, but didn't want me to feel like I was less than anybody else, mm-hmm. so gave me literally everything she fucking could mm-hmm. to not have that. So I did have you know, the PlayStation 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, the Nintendo, mm-hmm. I did have all that. But I didn't have like, uh, I don't know, whatever a regular family would have, like a big ass house. I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything like that. But I had everything. Like if you, went to, if you went to my house, it would be like a regular house. But if you go to my room, I had everything. You know, the best bed, the best TV, the mm-hmm. new system, all the games, because my mom worked so hard to do that. So that's kind of hard work. On that topic, that's why I noticed the thing that growing up in a certain way, in your scenario, let's, let's call it comfortable, right? Appreciative too, because like you saw your mom struggle. The relationship I've noticed that happens well, I think, to people. I think he didn't see her. Like he didn't see her struggle. He, she never made him realize that she no, was struggling. I mean, or you saw it. I mean, I want. I don't want to say she struggled, but she worked every day. Yeah. You know, okay. she worked her ass Sorry. off. I yeah, mean, that, that, that you do notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. Like, she, she, she wasn't over here. But you never houses, felt uh, a lack of anything. You always felt. No, yeah, I always had everything I wanted. Everything yeah. I wanted, like absolutely everything I wanted. My and, mom would. And just that's the relationship I'm talking about. Shout out, mom. With things. Like some people get emotionally attached to things mm-hmm. and they ascribe this like, weird fucking value to it. And that's why they get attached to it. Like the example you gave of the watch was funny because like I've gotten a watch as a gift. It has a emot- sentimental value to me, which is this one. But the mm-hmm. second one I bought, which is like me buying it, I had no emotional attachment to it. Like I was able to just get rid of it. Hell no. If I buy it, ain't, ain't nobody taking it from me. <laughs> yeah, I had no emotion. The second one I, I ever had, I bought for myself. Somebody mm-hmm. offered me more money for it. I'm like... Okay, sold. Because I can just go buy. Oh buy yeah, I mean, if you're if you're if you're taking a W, then yeah, that's different. But that's because you didn't need the money. You, you were just making a profit, so it made sense. That's yeah, it's just numbers. That's different. Yeah, no, that's just numbers. At that point, it's different. Yeah. What, what we're talking about earlier about like having to like sell it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. that's a different. Yeah. But no, look, one one of the best advice that I can give you guys is always stay cash heavy for certain situations where people have a bad day and you can actually have a come up, right? Leverage on that. So um, like we were saying before, uh, you buy these watches, you buy these things, uh, and you convince them to buy them because listen, if you ever gotta sell them, you can just sell it and make your money back. The reality of it is, if you need to money and you need to sell it ASAP, you will always make less. You will always lose money. So it's gonna, you're gonna lose money in a, in a, cause you gotta sell it right away. Somebody's gonna buy it, it's gonna be like, listen, I'll buy it because you need the money. Mm-hmm. And they'll give you way less. So I buy cars, watches stuff that i don't even like know what it is at a <laughs> discount just because i stay ready for those kind of moments you know absolutely like as, as, as sad as it is somebody's bad day because you could be your good day just fucking buy the stuff and then sell it for more if i ever see there's an ass that's the cool thing about collecting no. you, 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 you don't really don't like that no now, everybody calls me like whenever somebody's having any kind of uh bad time yeah. or anything they call me immediately i'm like the first phone call the really? first one yeah bro everybody and I don't know, 
I think people that know me know how responsible I am. So they just always like, yeah, Ethan has money. He could do it, right? Because I never like told anybody, hey, I'll buy your stuff. Like, I'm like, yo, like imagine I want to somebody, yo, uh, whenever you're doing bad, I'm here. <laughs> like, nah, I've never done that. But for some reason, people just know how responsible I am, know that I'm okay with money, know that I have it. So whenever they're having like a bad time, mm-hmm. they're like, yo, bro, you know, I need this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh. You, watch that. you shared a really good anecdote last time we sat down and talked mm-hmm. about how you look at somebody's financial literacy through how they're using their money in terms of the example you gave was a credit card at the restaurant. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember saying that, but you told yeah. me that if we we're all eating, he was talking about, oh, they'll put it all on their card and then get it from you because obviously there's this, this points and, and perks of mm-hmm. using certain credit cards mm-hmm. but that one stuck out to me a lot because mm-hmm. I brought it up to someone else as an mm-hmm. example I said oh someone I talked to you in this example and he is a Wall Street finance guy and he was like fuck that is a great idea that fucker yeah. didn't think about it no, and he's a finance guy yo it doesn't percent because like if you have a credit card, right? If I tell somebody, yo, go get me a thousand dollars right now yeah. and you don't have it. If you go if you got a credit card and you go like that like, go like the ATM to get cash out, you get a thirty percent fee or something, right? Mm-hmm. Just go to dinner with your friends, get like a bill that's like, you know, uh thirteen hundred dollars where your part's gonna be three hundred and there's gonna be a thousand total. And you just pay the bill and get the cash for yeah. everybody. And you points. get points. You get the points but you also have a thousand bucks now. And now mm-hmm. you have thirty days to double a thousand bucks, right? To make mm-hmm. you know, two thousand dollars and before you have to pay the credit card. So that's just like this is win win. Because what happened was you asked me because obviously I do private loans, private auto loans for people that you know uh, yeah. just want to go ahead a car. Um, and you asked me how would I measure their like the underwriting? Yeah. You said how I do all that, and I said all I need is you asked me a different question, but I just said I just need to see your three month statements. Last three month statements tell me everything I need to know about you. That's really all it is. I want to see how much money is coming in, and I don't necessarily need to know. Uh, where it's going? Uh, I just need to, so, need to see how much money's coming in and how it's coming in. Those That's habits, it. yeah, because the habits will show me how it's coming in. Is uh, is good. Like uh, sometimes I'll see statements where people have money coming in from a lot of different things uh, that they'll do like on a day to day basis. So that that lets me know that every day they're uh, looking for opportunity to make money. Mm. Right? Like if I see if I if I see somebody's statement that they get a paycheck from T-Mobile every fifteen and first of the month. I'm like, okay, well, this guy's a slave, right? If mm-hmm. I go to somebody's statement and they're getting T-Mobile payments, they're also getting a Zelle from his friend here, a Zelle mm-hmm. from his friend over there, cash deposit here, a de- cash up from here, there, Entrepreneur. Uh, over here. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's doing something where people are sending him money. Whether yeah. he's paying for something, he's doing something front, but he's having money coming in from a lot of ways. So now all this person might need to do is, uh, you know, grow, whatever that is, mm-hmm. or just be in a position to need to make more. And then he has all those avenues. You can't go to T-Mobile and say, hey, T-Mobile, give me, give me 5K more a month, right? But when you have, like, all these franchises coming in from other people, there is room for you to go and ask, hey, uh, you've been giving me 100 or 300 for this. Let's do 1,000 if I'm going to do this, you know? That is negotiable. So you have students, you said? 1,000%. Can you let the audience know where they can find your school? Uh, it's not as cool. Okay. It's, uh, Your course. You, you, have to, you can't even find it, man. Like, it's uh. nowhere to find. There's nowhere you can buy my programs. There's nowhere you can go and say, hey, I want to be a student and just buy. You have to, it has to be, you have to be lucky. Because mm. I usually take on three students a month, and I haven't okay. even done that in about four months. Because every single one of the students that I've had is like on their second car, on their third car, buying more, needing more. So uh, literally, you have to just send me an email, send me a DM with a really good reason and have money. It's not free. I met one of his students in Miami with the Lambo. Yeah. Wow. They just bought it that day. And, yeah. I, and they bought it from me, bro. They bought my Lambo. That was a really good moment yeah. for me. Yeah, he was excited. I felt so proud. Yeah, it's two of them. They bought it together. Yeah, he was very, very excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was insane for me because it's like, imagine how you feel. Uh, they bought my program and my mentorship back in December, mm-hmm. right? And I got them their first car, which, which was a brand new C8. Beautiful, 2022 C8. Um, and now, back in, uh, what was it, June, was it, it wasn't August, was it July? Or was it August? No, right now in August, yeah. Oh, wait. And then now in August, they went ahead and bought um, my Urus, my Lamborghini, which is what they wanted from the beginning. Yeah, flat black. Something, yeah. yeah, bro, it was just, it just felt great. And it beautiful. It felt so, yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> it felt great. Chef, it's actually his birthday. Happy birthday, Jonathan. <laughs> Happy birthday. birthday. Nice. Yeah, he's in, he's in the yacht right now. I'm missing it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that felt great. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was super great. Because what, what people don't understand about the course of the business, I was talking to Anthony, shout out online money about this, 
uh, earlier is that when you sell like a course, which is why you can't buy my program no more online without like at least speaking to somebody and then qualifying you, it's it's not that satisfying sometimes. It's a it's sometimes somebody buys your program and they go nuts, they go crazy, and it makes you feel amazing because they make so much money they find success. And then some people buy it and they don't do nothing. That is, it, it, it discourages you. You know, okay. nothing wrong with your product, nothing wrong with what you did. You did everything fine, but it just it's not satisfying. You know, and mm -hmm. us entrepreneurs. Like money, money comes because we find joy in the things that we do, right? Uh, I'm not chasing for money. I mean, like, I'm chasing for success and to be the best I can be, the best I, all my business could possibly be. But uh, at the end of the day, there, if there's no satisfaction, we just won't do it, right? So with the, with the whole course selling online, that's one of those things that you know me and Anthony were talking about. Is sometimes somebody will buy it and they'll have success, like you know these guys are on their, on their second car now, and they're about to get another Lambo in about a, about a month or two. Nice. Nice. Um, and he makes you feel really good. Young as fuck too. Yeah, they're, they're 24, 24 and 23. Ah, I have um, feeling, yeah. And then you have other people that just buy, don't really take action, and you're just like, well, this is just—it's not satisfying to see that, you know. Your satisfaction does—you do prioritize you, that, by the yeah. way, you because do that's feel why you have the, lever the leverage you have, yeah. because mm. you did have somebody that paid you, maybe not the most world-changing life money, like sorry, life-changing money, sorry, but you refunded them because they didn't fit how you work. Which oh that yeah that man. was yesterday yeah like that's yeah. important yeah. man uh, so he had somebody come in buy pay him x amount of dollars fifteen thousand. you can say it's fine <laughs> 50, 50 which man. is which is the lowest he package like, refund bye wow. yeah no nah. and uh shout out austin though one of my really good students uh and partners now we do a lot of stuff together he sent somebody through but this bro there's no you could offer me a million dollars and I still will say no to a lot of things. Like that, you know, there's, it's just like, no. Like, he, he, bro, especially for 15,000. We spent that last night, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? This guy was so annoying. Listen, you have to be humble. You have to, for you to come with, to somebody and want to make money with that person, want to learn with that person, be a partner, one, you have to come with a great attitude. Mm -hmm. Like, before you speak to me, before you speak to that person, put on your best face. Price in the mirror. Smile. <laughs> smile and get ready to come in like, I want that. You want to make that good inspection because money is not going to change it for you. All right. You got to come in ready to receive everything and willing to learn. Right. That's all you need. A good attitude and be coachable, teachable, and willing to learn. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. We talk about this a lot. Don't yeah, be scared back, to ask no questions. Problem. You don't. You don't have to say you know the answer. You can say no. Actually, I don't know. You like you know people will be like, That's oh, you know okay. that song, and you're like, yeah, yeah, no. Okay, so what, what's yeah, the word? Yeah, I love doing that. And then and then I they're like, oh, uh, you look like a fool. Shit so, no, no, no. I love telling people I don't know something yeah. because everybody expects me to always know everything or at least pretend. So somebody will be like, oh yeah, so this is that, and I'll be like, wait, hold on. So what does that mean? And they'll be like. It throws them off. They're yeah, like, oh, the Ethan Durand is what it means. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Can you please teach me? And that's the it way you learn. And that's why that you're in the, that's why you're in the place that you I are. I love it. It's so much fun. Because like, you are a sociopath, you're a highly functioning sociopath. That's <laughs> what that's called. That can work around. Yeah, help me convince people. my friends that I'm a sociopath, please. I really think I am. <laughs> <laughs> True life. I think I'm a sociopath. I really think so. I really think so. I'm, I'm so analytical. Yeah. Is there anything? Well, I would say the only thing that, that, that maybe will convince me from not being a sociopath is the fact that I've never fired anybody. I can't fire nobody, so I'll have care. Um, you just refund them. No, fire <laughs> No, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about <laughs> that, too. My face. that too. That too. That yeah. too. Um, I mean, look, was uh, you guys in billions? What's, yeah. what's the point of having fuck you money if you can't say fuck you? That's number one. Mm. But no, look, I can't fire nobody. Care fires them all. I, I've never had, I don't have the balls to fire people. Oh, you should. You said really? You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never fired anybody in my life. Uh, especially, really? especially, especially girls. So like lately I haven't been hiring girls because like whenever they don't do a good job, I'm like, hmm, I, I'm going to have care fired her, but <laughs> still it's going to be a problem. But even with guys, I just feel bad because guys that work for me, they come for me because yeah, they want to they wanna have a job, but they want to like, just be around me, you know? Mm -hmm. So when it's time to like be like, yeah, it's not I'll working, you got to go. Almost. Yeah, bro, it's bad. I'm like, I don't want to deal with this. I just, I just leave and I tell Kier, yo, doing something. Yeah, you remember the dictator? Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what I was just thinking. <laughs> you, you have you seen the dictator? No. With Sasha Baron Cohen, the guy who plays Borat. No. Ah, fuck. No reference point. Well, you, you've seen it. Which one? The, the, the dictator. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah every yeah. time he wants somebody off, he tells he's just, just running goes. Yeah. He's hilarious. like, yeah, yeah, it was great seeing yeah. you. <laughs> oh, you actually have seen it? Yeah. yeah oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. No, I haven't it's actually. Just <laughs> <laughs> So as we wrap things up, <laughs> as we wrap things up, is there anything that you feel like you need to work on? On myself? On yourself personally. I'm fucking amazing. Nothing. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> nah, nah, no, no, no. Uh, I would say everybody out there watching, you know, believe in yourself, keep pushing, uh, and just don't give up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The, the bad days, it's what leads to a good day, like I said before. Go through my Instagram and see everything I say is for a reason, you know? Whenever you're having a bad time, those bad times, you don't give up. Those bad times make a good day. That's all. So as we start to wrap up, we'll go through some of the finer points of what Ethan is putting down here. And it was actually the whole premise of this conversation, which is making money is not a thing you do. It's a skill you learn, you do, you have. And in his experience and something he was immediately went into is leverage. The name of the game is leverage. If you want money now, tomorrow and a year from now, it's leverage. And what you focus on when it comes to building leverage is, okay, what am I bringing to the table? One of his examples, because he gave many, was if I'm sitting down with my friends to eat dinner, I'll cover the bill, you give me the money. Because your relationship with money is going to basically, if you can handle, and you said this last time, and it stuck with me, he said, if you can handle $100, great. If you can handle $1,000, amazing. But why he wants your bank statements when he does his underwriting issues, like, if I can see that you can handle money and more sums of money, then everything's gonna be fine. Uh, How you do anything is how you do everything. Then after that, he immediately goes into an example of if you don't have 10,000 or 100,000, you only have 1,000, he gives a great example of arbitrage. You use that 1,000 as a good faith deposit for a thing, and then you just sublease or rent or sell said thing, and you keep the difference. He even gave an example of where he uses, you know, something to make 2,500, he puts that back out there for 4,500, that's a $2,000 a month income now. Which Plus gets, equity gains. Exactly, and then which goes into the other part of this, which is buying your income. In this example, let's say you make that 2,000 or whatever you're making, don't go and ball out and buy some stupid shit that's not gonna be worth anything. Yes. Buy an asset, a watch, a car, a thingamajig, whatever the fuck it is that you can sell. Like when I got here, he had a figurine here that I personally know cost thousands of dollars because my son loves it. And I know when he bought it, he knew out there there's gonna be a collector who's gonna pay me a lot of bread for this. 1,000%. Exactly, so when it comes to that leverage, is buy income, buy income. That could be an asset, that can be something that's gonna compound in, in interest and continue to accrue in value. And then as we start to wrap things up, he immediately goes to the idea of his motivation is his motivation, it might not be yours. But this is why it's so important to have something that's feeding you. It's, 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 sometimes it can be fear-based. We're, we're, we have two motivators, from and against. And a good way to know what you are is this. Try it out with someone else. Ask them a question, give them, put them an opportunity that involves risk. If they immediately go with, here's what I want, that's someone who's driven towards. If they start to go on the whole spiel about, here's what I don't want, here's what I don't want to happen, that's someone who's against. That's their motivators. Then, just do it on yourself in a mirror, or by yourself, talk to yourself in public, it doesn't matter. That way you get to learn yourself and you get to actually see what's gonna be your motivator. Because that's pretty much the only way you're gonna keep the machine running. Um, uh, forget motivation, you gotta be disciplined. Mm. Motivation, when yeah. motivation is not there, you have to have that discipline and totally get up and agree. do it. I, I guess I was going along the lines of, for example, motivation is perishable, you know that. But specifically is your motivator is going to continue to, mo- to inspire you to look for a way through, right? right? Not everyone has that, and that's why they're lacking discipline. It's like with books. Not everyone loves books, right? Mm. But if you actually are interested in a topic, you, you're going to fucking read that book. Because you, you're getting something out of it. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, 1,000%. Yeah. So, now, but the way you, you put it to be, you just kind of sounded like, uh, to be disciplined, you have to have motivation. Mm-hmm. But what I want to put out there is, build the discipline before the motivation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. Because yeah. then like, if That's a good point. when the motivation is not there, if, if, if your discipline comes to motivation, then when motivation is gone, discipline is gone too. Yeah. You know? Exactly. That's the yeah. Like this yeah, morning, well, I didn't run for a five mile run, but I did. Well, why'd you run? You did? I did. Well, good for you. What? Yeah. That's why'd crazy. Nah, that's yeah. discipline. Coming to a yeah. whole new city. Wait, yeah. We went out last night <laughs> and you Four know a. she was going crazy. She had a good time. <laughs> and um, you months. woke up and did five miles? I did, I'm impressed. Did. Yeah, you got to come work with me. I like that. <laughs> that's, that's discipline. That's discipline. I need that. Five uh, miles? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever done more than like one. It was, you know, a jog and then a walk and then a jog. And then, but I did it. You did five <laughs> miles. Hey, that's discipline. You did it. I don't care how you get it Why done, but I you did, did it. it. Because I can feel better afterwards. I knew I would feel better afterwards. Mentally, because, you feel more yeah, accomplished. Yeah. I needed to sweat. And, so, and honestly, routine is everything. Routine and, and is I, everything. I cannot get out of my routine. I know yeah, if I get know. out of my routine, yeah. I'm going to feel off. I knew I had to interview you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be on my A game. Being clear-minded is so mm. important to me. 
yeah, well, that's it, a motivator right it's, there. It's a brain thing, though, guys. Listen, if your brain can be your biggest enemy or your yep. biggest asset, all right? And if you say the night before, I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to go to the gym, and then you don't do it, you're already giving your brain a W and your mouth a L. Mm-hmm. What it means is the perfect way to be is you want your mouth to control your brain and your brain and your body to take action on what you say. With that being said is the way to do that is to stay in accountable with the things you say. If you say to yourself, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to go to the gym in the morning, I'm going to wake up at this time, and then you do it, your mind mm-hmm. is instead of saying, he ain't going to do it, I'm going to go to sleep a little longer, right? right. Your brain is going to, the way you want it, it's like when you speak, your brain is starting to get your body ready to make that happen because you have trained your body and your brain that whatever comes out of your mouth is what's going to happen. If you say you're going to jump, you jump. Okay, so if I say tomorrow I'm gonna go to the gym, my brain is already doing okay. He needs to go to sleep at 11 because he has to wake up at five, and then his body needs X amount of rest so he can wake up and do this and not that. Okay, so whatever comes in your mouth, train your brain to follow through. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, I want to do this, and then the next thing, like, oh, I want to sleep one more hour. That's your brain winning. That's you letting your brain be your biggest enemy instead of making it be your biggest asset. Let it work for you, not control you. If that makes sense. And to caveat of what you're saying. The way that you show up for yourself is the way that others will show up for you. Or you set the tone for the way that people right. will treat you. If you if you're oh, yeah, a person, if you're a person of your word, if you're accountable, people are not gonna wanna mess with you because they'll be scared. <laughs> As he said, people are scared. New so, York instills that in you too. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. New York yeah, really New York just gives you a little like I don't know, you you know this because you mm. obviously you love it here. But New York gives you like a little don't fuck with me sort of uh, attitude with mm-hmm. a lot of things. It gives you a little bit of unfuckable, like it makes you a little unfuckable with. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I see, I see to, my, to myself, to my people, and I you know what I'm saying, I, I don't know. But that New York anger does come out once in a while. Yeah. yeah that New York pride comes in with like, oh, Dude, okay. I regress, bro. I was so chill in Miami, I got here like within a few hours, she's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. what is wrong with you? You changed. And I was like, like don't talk yeah, to me I'm like angry. that. Yeah, I'm angry, I'm in New York. <laughs> My bad. I'm in New York. I gotta, I gotta keep the look. My bad. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm angry. Latina, yo te pego. My bad. Bro, she, she was like, yo, what happened to you? You switched up on me. Like, oh, shit. My bad. I was like, my bad. So what he's saying is, don't move to Miami. Move to New York. <laughs> Miami Actually, sucks. yes. Go back to New York, please. I mean, yeah. Wow, all why are you getting rid of us, son? Because y'all are fucking on my rent. Oh, good point. <laughs> that is a good point. That yeah, is a good point. Um, anyways. But anyways. Yes. So, dude, thank you so much for your hospitality. <laughs> thank you guys um, for coming. I appreciate it. Awesome. And it's funny when you're talking about like we went out. Like, I do like the fact that today we all just got up. Like, nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. Just and do what we gotta do. Running. I went shopping. You went running. And it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yes. <laughs> but look, honestly, yo, I can't wait to be on episode two. I want episode two when because you guys, oh, you guys haven't dropped the episode yet. Um, when uh, you know, when you guys are like at a hundred episodes or fifty episodes, I want to come back and like, yeah, yeah, I want to do another one. I want to do another one. If we do that, dude, you, okay, you know your 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 rally. Yeah. What do you think? We do the the episode at your rally. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be a lot I'm of down. people. Though. I don't know about you. I'd be I'd be, I'd be a lot of people, but yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> exactly. I'll do it. We, we, we could do it all. Just have the track right behind us. Oh yeah, like, all the cars are going. Loud. No, I don't think I don't mean like literally. Oh. literally doing Mine's it. are oh, loud. Sorry. On location. No, a thousand percent. Super right. down. Listen, this whole uh, on the go podcast could be so much fun too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and you, and you, bro, you can start doing like little shorts, like uh, like interviews, like little like you know, like like stand up little quick interviews. Yeah. You and one other person, ten yeah. seconds, fifteen seconds as shorts. Ooh, that'd be dope. For the people that don't have uh, are active. that have uh, attention span <laughs> problems. True. That that is a real thing. And I want you to challenge yourself to work on your discipline. If there's anything that you're picking up from what was said here, and let's say you forget everything. It's create leverage, buy income, and work on your goddamn discipline. This has been Active Minds Podcast. We want to give huge thanks to Hands Free Automation and Vegan Gummies for keeping this machine running. In fact, that's why we're in New York right now. So huge thanks out, thanks to them. Huge thanks to people like Ethan and Ethan's Drive. And he's built an amazing team for himself, practicing what he preaches. Danny, thank you as well for coming out, being a great sport, thank dancing you. the night away until 5 in the morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But I ran five miles the next day. You made up for it. You did. (laughs) We have been Catriel C. Sarfati and Danny for Active Minds Podcasts, where we look to learn from the experiences and perspectives of people who have paved their own lane. Let's move smarter together. Catch you in the next one. So, guys, as we're wrapping up, we want to remind you that we have our membership program now available on Active Minds Club 
Active Minds Club dot com. Grab yourself a seat. See you there. <laughs>